This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I, I'm desperate for you. And I, I'm lost without you. That's part of a song that I had forgotten about and just started singing. And I love it so much. And I got it pulled up to put in the description box. It's called This is the Air I Breathe by Michael W. Smith with lyrics. Now, when I learned it, of course, it was in a church. We sang it a little different, but it's beautiful. It is a beautiful song. It starts off, this is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. I left that part off because you can't sing it all. It'll get you for a copyright strike. But I was saying, it's time to do my daily bread. I got to do my daily bread. And I had already opened my Bible. It just open to this particular proverb and how appropriate for this time we're living in. So I'm going to do Proverbs 13, which is a word, a number from, means rebellion, starting with verse 1. And in the NASB on the blueletterbible.org, it starts off with the title, Contrast the Upright and the Wicked. Boy, don't we have a huge, huge contrast going on right now. We sure do. A wise son accepts his father's discipline. But a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. Let's fill that in with a wise child of God accepts their father's discipline. But a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. Have you ever been disciplined by father? Boy, how do I have? I knew it too. I knew it when I did it, and I knew it when the rebuke came that it was from God. <clears throat> Sometimes bad things happen in our lives, and it's of Satan. But when it's the Father's rebuke, you should know it. And always, when things happen, take it to the Father in prayer and ask, did I do something wrong? Is this a rebuke? Or do I rebuke the devil if you're not sure? Alright, verse 2. From the fruit of a man's mouth, he enjoys good. And the footnote says, eats. Literally, he eats good. From the fruit of a man's mouth. He enjoys good. But the desire or soul of the treacherous is violence. The one who guards his mouth preserves his life. Another reminder to watch what you say. The one who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. When you just flap your mouth, blah, 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 instead of thinking about what you're saying, you, the literal translation is the one who opens wide his lips, ruin is his. Ruin is his. 
That's what it says. The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing. But the soul of the diligent is made fat. A righteous man hates falsehood, but a wicked man acts disgustingly and shamefully. I hate falsehood. I hate lies. I hate being lied to. I hate all these lies of the politics, which is why I can't stand to watch them. I don't give rip who became president. They're just playing a play, people. I hope you all realize that. The Illuminati gave them their scripts a long time ago and gave them power in return for accepting the role. Moving on. A, uh, okay, I said a righteous man hates falsehood, but a wicked man acts disgustingly and shamefully. Don't they all? They're all disgusting and shameful, every one of them. Righteousness guards the one whose way is blameless. But wickedness subverts the sinner or sin. There is one who pretends to be rich but has nothing. Another pretends to be poor or impoverishes, impoverishes himself but has great wealth. I don't personally know anybody like that, but I suppose if someone is like that, their reward is great. If they're sharing what they have, keeping enough, of course, for their self, they're wealthy but pretends to be poor. Hmm. They have great wealth. The ransom of a man's life is his wealth, but the poor hears no rebuke. Hmm. Verse 9. The light of the righteous rejoices, but the lamp of the wicked goes out. Huh. Boy, that reminds me of the parable of the ten virgins. The light of the righteous rejoices. Let's see what that footnote is. Shines brightly. The light of the righteous shines brightly. But they changed it to rejoices. But the lamp of the wicked goes out. Hmm. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? Are the five wise pretenders to the faith? They act like they're ready. They act like they're so holy. They act like they're ready for Jesus and oh I love Jesus I can't wait for Jesus to come but when they're alone or with certain others they're different makes me wonder through insolence comes nothing but strife but wisdom is with those who receive counsel. Can you receive counsel without getting your feelings hurt and quitting and not going back to that channel because they said something that hurt your feelings? Think about it. What if somebody called you on something? Would you be able to handle it? gracefully and say thank you thank you for helping me to be better 
that's what it means being like that. Verse 11. Wealth obtained by fraud dwindles. But the one who gathers by labor increases it. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But desire fulfilled is a tree of life. I think of that verse when I when I think about, you know, wanting Jesus to come so bad. He, that's our blessed hope, right? The, the rapture. Getting to escape, to go to be with our Lord. And when you want it so much and you think about it a lot, it's hope deferred. It makes the heart sick. And the Lord knows it. It's not wrong to want him so much that your heart is sick about it. But desire fulfilled is the tree of life. Yes, it will be. How awesome when that day comes. When desire is fulfilled, it's a tree of life. It's uh, literally, come, but desire coming fulfilled is a tree of life. Hmm, that doesn't make as much sense, does it? Desire coming, it's coming now. He's so cute. The one who despises the word will be in debt to it. But the one who fears the commandment will be rewarded. And what do you think that means? Fears the commandment? Yeah, fears breaking it. You see, if you have that reverent fear of breaking the commandments, you will be rewarded. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life. To turn aside from the snares of death. Good understanding produces favor. But the way of the treacherous is hard. Every prudent man acts with knowledge, but a fool displays folly or shows, sp spreads out folly. Yeah, every prudent man acts with knowledge. That's how we want to be. But a fool displays folly. Always watch what you say. It's hard, I know. Sometimes things just come out. You just, something rises up in you over a situation and you just blurt it out. You can't help it. But then what do you got to do? Maybe apologize. Maybe repent. And then you eat some crow. Okay, so it happened. You take care of it and then move on. All right? Always accept your forgiveness. If you ask for forgiveness... You accept it. You apologize to the persons involved and you move on. All right. A wicked messenger falls into adversity, but a faithful envoy brings healing. What's an envoy? Envoy. It's an envoy. Have you ever heard of an envoy in, in the service? Let's look it up. Where is it? Oh, messenger. But a faithful. Oh, here now they've changed it to ambassador is health. Now, why'd they do that? Okay, that's weird. So they're equating it to the word ambassador. 
and let's see how it can be used. Ambassador Pang, P-A-N-G, Messenger Pains, P-A-I-N-S, Binge, Sorrow, Envoy Messenger, Pivot of Door Hinge. That's totally different. Or a pain or distress. I guess that would be like a birth pain. That is pain, P-A-N-G, as opposed to birth pains. And they mean almost the same thing. So anyway, moving on. Okay. When I read that at first, I thought of a, a military envoy. And maybe I'm confusing it with another word. Somebody tell me if I am. They're not really messengers, are they? They're soldiers come to fight. An envoy, a group of them, a troop. I guess in my mind that's what, that's what I was thinking, but I'm probably confusing it with another word. It's okay. We do not have to be perfect in every way. Okay. Every prudent man acts with knowledge. Let's see, did I skip one? None of those sound familiar. Hold on, give me a second. The, te the 14 says the teaching of the wise is a fountain of life to turn aside from the snares of death. Good understanding produces favor, but the way of the treacherous is hard. Every prudent man acts with knowledge, but fool displays folly. A wicked messenger falls into, here we were, a wicked messenger falls into adversity. But a faithful envoy brings healing. I see. Yeah, messenger, envoy, they're both used the same way. Poverty and shame will come to him who neglects discipline. But he who regards reproof will be honored. Desire realized is sweet to the soul, but it is an abomination to fools to turn away from evil. Right. It's an abomination to fools to turn away from evil. Turn from evil? Stop having all this fun? Are you kidding me? Our lives would be so boring. I'm not doing that. You go ahead. You see, that's how that's their attitude. They can't see it. They're ignorant. He who walks with wise men will be wise. But the companion of fools will suffer harm. Same thing on this YouTube. You listen to the you listen to the wise men, you will be wise. If you remain a companion of the fools teaching the lies, you will suffer harm. In the end, it will rub off on you. Adversity pursues sinners. Oh, let me just finish that. That's why you must continually pray for discernment and wisdom. Before you go listening to sermons of just anybody remember pastors of churches are five if they're a 501 c3 and if they're right they'll admit it right there somewhere on their channel they are not allowed to teach you the whole truth the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth all right which is okay as long as the stuff they do teach is not a lie, okay? 
you use the word of God plus taking it to the Lord and praying to him about it if you don't understand something a preacher on here that you like to listen to you listen to him you take it to the Lord go to the scripture yourself and see is he telling me the truth is this right and so forth adversity pursues sinners but the righteous will be rewarded with prosperity and it doesn't always mean a whole bunch of money down here on earth but let me tell you something if you make it to heaven and I pray, pray to God you all are not only to heaven but the first time around you'll go with us and the prosperity you'll find in heaven is going to be beyond your comprehension. I just know it. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Hmm. I hope nobody takes that one verse out of context a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children not all of us are wealthy not all of us have been able to work our tail off so we could store up thousands and thousands of dollars to leave our children's children or mine maybe have been on something else like God or our health failed us. Some of these scriptures in here are meant to be for those who can and God knows those who can't. Just couldn't do it when it comes to money and inheritance. Moving on. And besides that, an inheritance is way more than money. If I bring up my children in the way they should go and teach them to teach their children the same way, is that much more, not much more a better inheritance than money? You see? It goes more ways than money. Abundant food is in the fallow ground of the poor. The fallow ground of the poor. I don't remember that word being in my Bible. Much food is in the tillage Okay, let's, in the fallow of the ground, fallow ground, tillage, plowing, tillable or untilled or fallow ground. Properly plowing, concretely, freshly plowed. My servant might always have a lamp. Well, that'd be something you could get into to study. I'd, I don't, I, I kind of get it that there is much food in ground that is freshly tilled. Uh, abundant food is in the fallow ground of the poor. If he takes the time to freshly till the ground before he plants his seeds, then he'll have much food. As opposed to going out there and just trying to rake up, rake up some topsoil and dump your seeds in. You see, it won't grow as good. It says, 
Abundant food is in the fallow ground of the poor, but it is swept away by injustice. And the footnote says, but there is what is swept away by injustice. Hmm. There is what is swept away by injustice. It does seem like people who try to do good, try to live right, following the Bible, living the way they should, injustice or the devil could come along and take what is ours especially if they don't know to plead the blood over it put a hedge of protection around their property made up of warrior angels and the wall of holy spirit fire from heaven we have to protect our things poor rich or not protect your things that God has blessed you with, even if it's not much. Plead the blood of Jesus over it. All of it. Each person, each animal. I mean, I don't say, say you have a dozen cows, you know, I plead the blood of Jesus over Bessie. I plead the blood of Jesus over Sally. I plead the blood of Jesus over Moo. I, you see what I'm saying? You can just say, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over myself and my whole family, over all my pets and all my other animals that I am raising. That'll get it, okay? All right, moving on. He who withholds his rod hates his son, but he who loves him disciplines him diligently. Yeah, kids who never get disciplined, you can tell who they are versus the other. Kids just don't get it much these days, and you surely can tell it. The righteous has enough to satisfy his appetite, but the stomach of the wicked is in need. They always want more, 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 more. And that's the end of Proverbs chapter 13. I hope that I brought something to you that will help you in some way. And so I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, over each and every one of us, our devices, and our internet connections. So with that, I'm going to say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.